As a society, we have been conditioned to think that being thin is a sure sign of health, while being overweight, at least according to the BMI charts, signals major health issues. Is that really true? Well, the answer is an unequivocal no. It's not true at all. Because the fact is, you can be overweight, obese even, and still be far healthier than so-called thin people. So, what are the health implications of being fit or unfit? What does it mean to our health to be classified by the BMI charts as overweight or normal weight? And finally, can we be fit, healthy, and overweight all at the same time? Well, the short answer to that last question is yes. Now, the long answer is what this set of posts is all about. And, and get this, if you've ever struggled with trying to lose weight, this three-part series is going to be a wellspring of wonderfully good news. So let me begin by saying that the, the purpose of this particular set of posts is to show that it's our level of fitness rather than our BMI, body mass index, that plays the greatest role in ensuring our health and vitality. Now, don't get me wrong, improving body composition is a wonderful goal, but it's your level of fitness, not fatness, that plays the greatest role in ensuring your health and vitality. Because the evidence is overwhelming and unequivocal that living a sedentary lifestyle is the major cause of disability and premature death. In other words, our health is determined by our level of fitness, not fatness. Did you know that the average American adult spends 170 minutes a day watching television, 101 minutes a day driving their cars, but less than 19 minutes a day exercising? In fact, Sedentary living in the U.S. accounts for some 250,000 premature deaths annually. But with that said, living our best life isn't about lifespan. It's about health span. Because there's no glory in being the oldest living person in a long-term care facility. See, here's the thing. We've been led to believe wrongly that obesity is a direct cause of premature death. The underlying flaw in this false belief stems from confusing correlation with causation. In other words, sure, it's true that many overweight people suffer from poor health and premature death, but so do many people who are considered normal or even underweight. And to illustrate the folly of equating association with causation, researcher John Yudkin published a, a tongue-in-cheek study way back in 1957 showing that television and radio ownership were a far greater cause of coronary mortality in England than any dietary factor. In other words, he facetiously claimed that the principal cause of heart disease was mere ownership of a radio or television because the correlation between the two was statistically overwhelming. Now, obviously, radios and televisions cannot cause heart disease, but they can lead to a drastic reduction in physical activity compared to those who, well, at least at that time, didn't own a radio or a television. See, one of the first studies on the relationship between physical activity and mortality rates was conducted by Dr. Jeremy Morris in London, England, in 1953. And in fact, Morris did a number of studies on a variety of occupations and how their level of physical activity affected coronary heart disease. And Morris's first and most famous study was between the drivers and the conductors of London's famous double-decker buses. And this study was so ideal because it involved several thousand subjects under identical conditions with only one variable, physical activity. On a London double-decker, there are only two employment positions, drivers and conductors. The actual shift was five and a half hours long, during which drivers, on average, sat for 90% of their shift, 
and conductors sat for less than 10%. Now, conservatively, the conductors climbed 500 to 750 stairs per working day, which has been compared to brief interval training. Mean heart rate during a, a working shift was 106 beats per minute in conductors and 91 beats per minute in the drivers. Now, although the study was focused on the effects of physical activity on coronary heart disease, Morris and his colleagues also wanted to know if body size played a role in the results. Surprisingly, or not, it didn't. See, all the drivers and conductors wore uniforms, so their pant and waist size were documented. Now, when Morris compared the pant and waist size with the cardiac mortality rates, he found no statistical difference whatsoever. The conductors had half the cardiovascular mortality rates as the sedentary drivers, regardless if their physique was slim, average, or portly. Now, in the next post, we're going to look at another famous study that further supports the theory that when it comes to your health, if you focus on fitness first, everything else, including your body composition, will improve in dramatic ways. And the best part is, it can actually be quite easy. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.